Yeah, but what happened in us one? You didn't like us no. one. There's no alcohol. No alcohol. Body. 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 First Egypt series. I know I gave you a ton of information in last week's Egypt travel guide. So if you haven't seen that already, make sure you go check that out. But I didn't want this information to get lost in that video. The number one question I got while traveling around Egypt was, is it safe for women to travel around Egypt? And now I'm a six foot two, 200 pound American man traveling with another large Canadian man. So it's tough for me to give you a true authentic honest answer to this question. So what we did was we found a couple of women travelers while we were traversing ourselves across Egypt and we asked them three very simple questions. Do you feel safe here? What was your experience like? And what advice or what would you do differently next time? Let's hear from them. People are gonna, yes, people definitely watch you. I've had a couple of times people have asked to take photos of me and I just say no politely, but then after that, once you start talking to people and like just be a human, they're really, really kind and really nice to you and they wanna show you the best side of their country. You can do what you want, wear what you want, go where you want, but eyes are gonna be on you. People are gonna notice that you're there. I've never felt unsafe though and people have been kind, but you do need to have kind of your guard up and your wits about you and Pay attention to what's going on around you. Tell me, is Egypt safe to travel? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I went to the market by myself, walked around for a couple hours the other night, and I felt absolutely at home. I just want to know, from a female's perspective, what has been your experience here in Egypt? Super safe. I feel really good about things, uh, other than people asking really persistently to shop their shop. <laughs> I feel totally fine. We have been with a guide a lot of it. Have you been gawked at or just mostly selling stuff? No, it's only been the, the kids really that, that are more hello and like they wanted pictures with us. But as far as men, I haven't really felt that. I okay. mean we've dressed conservatively. Yeah. 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 Where else did you go besides here in Luxor? We went to Sharm El Sheikh for two days and we were at the the Red Sea on our own without a guide. Okay. And then we came back to Cairo and started our tour. How was that in Sharm el Sheikh without a guide? Yeah, great. Well, I started my trip in Dahab, which is a small town on the Sinai Peninsula. It's like mainly a diving town. So if you want to go diving in the Red Sea, you learn how to dive, this is the place to go. It just has the most friendly atmosphere. Like everyone there is super down to earth. Everyone there rides bikes. Everyone's super chill. Like it's like a mix of international travelers who live there to dive and then a mix of Egyptians as well. I then took the bus to Cairo, which was completely different. I wouldn't say that it's dangerous, but it's it's hectic. A lot of people might try to scam you. Like if you're walking to a museum, they'll tell you it's closed. You have to take this route. Um, that's probably a scam. Don't listen to them. When I went to the pyramids, um, I had a local friend that came with me and that really helped. I mean, you can go to the pyramids alone. It's perfectly safe. You're just gonna get a lot of people hassling you, trying to sell you stuff. From there, I took the train, the overnight train to Aswan. It was actually really nice. Like the trains are basically the same as in Canada. All the staff were super nice to me. From there, I went to Luxor, which is probably my like, maybe my least favorite place in Egypt actually. Obviously the, the history, like, Valley of the Kings, the hot air balloon ride over there was amazing. But in terms of like how safe I felt walking through the markets in Luxor, I did walk through the markets by myself and I got a lot of, you know, men just saying, come to my shop, come to my shop. One like followed me home. Everything was fine, nothing bad happened. But yeah, that's probably the place I felt the most unsafe. And then I went to Marsa Alam, which is another diving town, like way further down the coast. It's also on the Red Sea, but it's the best diving spot for like wildlife. It's absolutely amazing. I went diving with dolphins, dugongs. Like if you want to dive with big animals, go to Marsa Alam. Everyone there is just so friendly, so nice. Felt 100% safe. And then the last place that I went in Egypt, which I also recommend highly for solo female travelers, is Siwa. That's probably the place I felt the safest. It's a bit of a, a journey to get there. Like I took an overnight bus, again, felt very safe on it, from Cairo to there, which was maybe like 10 hours. But once I got there, like the people in Siwa, it's just a completely different vibe from anywhere else in Egypt. You actually like, 
if you want to go in a store and buy something like no one's even going to try to come up to you like you have to ask them like can i pay for this when the prices there are extremely fair like if you want to buy gifts in egypt just buy them in siwa because people there are so honest they're so kind i first started traveling to egypt in 2018 and since then i've probably been back about half a dozen times and cumulatively spent a couple months there i've recently fallen in love with el guna which is a very chic resort beach town in the southern red sea and then up in sinai I'm totally in love with Dahab. I run a retreat there every year, which is kind of, I would say, Egypt's most independent, traveler-friendly little bohemian beach town. Safety is definitely the big question that's on everyone's mind when it comes to Egypt and when it comes to the Middle East at large. I definitely had my own hesitations and concerns when I was visiting for the very first time, especially due to the accounts I had read from many, many women about harassment they experienced in Egypt. And without discounting any of their experiences, which I'm sure were very valid. Um, I personally have had nothing but positive experiences in Egypt, um, and I have always felt safe there. And I have ridden the metro uh, in the women's only car in Cairo. I've taken Ubers late at night in Hergada. I've walked down the beach by myself at night in Dahab. Um, and I've done those things asking locals first if they were okay to do and certain things that can seem a little alarming if you haven't experienced them before like having um, the trunk of your cab searched on the way into your hotel or going through metal detectors frequently or seeing armed guards around. While they might seem a little unusual at first, a lot of those are measures that have been in place since the Arab Spring to really make tourists actually ironically feel as comfortable as possible and you get used to them quickly. <laughs> now for me, whenever I visit a country, I'm always hiring a private tour guide because not only do they provide great insight and bring you to all the great local hot spots, but they also provide a level of security. And this time, in, in Cairo, I had my tour guide who was very reputable and I felt safe because, you know, nobody hit on me, nobody tried to do say anything to me, but I will say they did speak to him, my tour guide in Arabic. So I don't know what they were saying. Um, and I just thought <laughs> my tour guide knew all these people, but uh, he didn't. He ended up telling me afterwards that they had approached him and asked if they were able to take a selfie with me. And luckily my tour guide, without even having to ask me, he just told them politely, no thank you, she's fine. But I'll also say this, I did hit up some great little areas in Cairo by myself. I spoke with my hotel concierge, I took an Uber, it, I knew it was safe, and I walked around and I was not harassed. So I felt quite comfortable, just be very aware, be um, alert like you would for any other country that you visit. Tell me, do you guys feel safe traveling around Egypt as ladies? Yes, especially if you've got a tour guide. I, I would recommend to have a tour guide. Okay. Because if you don't have a tour guide, you're certainly not going to feel safe because everybody's all over you. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's trying to hassle you. So I would honestly, honestly mm, recommend a tour okay. guide. But um, the best thing about the tour guide is that they give you the hints as well, what to look out for. We found some people that were actually trying to sell us dope and stuff. Uh huh. But because we were warned by our guide, so we were already on the lookout for yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So we're quite safe. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And where else did you go besides Luxor? Have you been in? Anywhere else? Yes. You we went to, went to Aswan, Cairo, Cairo, we went Cairo. to Edfu. Okay. We went Cairo. to a whole lot of places. Well. Yeah. And how did you feel in Cairo? Oh, we love Cairo. Cairo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we loved Cairo. Oh, we loved Cairo. Oh, you did? Yes. You didn't have a guide at the time. Where did you go out? We went to Cairo. It's an imperial. But what happened in Aswan? You didn't like Aswan? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, Now, to be completely honest, the majority of the women that we found to interview here in Luxor and across Egypt have not been true solo female travelers. Towards the Red Sea, more chill places like Dahab, Sharm el Sheikh, you will find a lot more solo female travelers. But in these areas like Cairo, Luxor, Aswan, Siwa, a lot of these women that we've seen and spoke with have guides or are traveling with a group of friends. That's one big aspect of traveling here in Egypt that when I come back next time, I want to interact with more Egyptian women. It's a male-driven society. 
Most of our interaction was with men. We did go out for drinks one night with some of Ziad's friends, and that was amazing. So I want more of that next time. Re our representatives from Alexandria. Hi. <laughs> all right, advice. If you're visiting Egypt, remove all expectations and just live the experience. It's not like what you see. Just go and get to know people. Just don't follow what you find online. <laughs> <laughs> ask the right people. The locals are very friendly, so anyone you're going to ask for anything are going to help you. Just live the experience. That's my advice. What's the one dish that we have to try while we're in here? Uh, Question for everyone. Uh, 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 Two out of four. Here we go. <laughs> Fish in Alexandria. Fish in Alexandria. And if you did it all over again, what would you change? If I did it all over again, I would do like less planned and I'll leave a little bit more room for spontaneous things yeah. um, to kind of explore a little bit more and just see different sides of Egypt because there, I've only been to a couple of towns and there are multiple sides to every town and many, many things to see. If you're new to traveling, I think a tour guide at a cruise could be a really great way to see the sites in a safe environment. If you're an experienced traveler, I think kind of piecing together a trip with some like Airbnb experiences or doing like small day trips with tour companies is a really great way to experience different people's perspectives and different companies without being committed to one company the whole time. If I had to do it all over again, I would look on Airbnb and book the Airbnb experiences because people have been absolutely wonderful on there. Just for friendly, um, Lots of local advice, local tips, really giving you the inside experience of what it's like to be here. Overall, my best advice would be to just not be afraid of it. It has such a bad reputation that it doesn't deserve. Egypt is an amazing destination that has so much to offer. It really surprised me and I really wasn't even expecting to like Egypt because I was so afraid of the harassment and it ended up becoming one of my favorite countries. Now this might be because I spent the majority of my time in these small towns like Daha, Marsalam, Siwa, in total, I probably spent like a week out of the six weeks I was there in the big cities like Cairo and Luxor. And to be honest, like the people that I've talked to that really didn't enjoy Egypt are the people that only went to those two places. Obviously don't discount them. They have a ton of amazing historic sites. I know you want to see the pyramids and it is worth it, but just know that like those places are hectic and just like any big city, you're going to get more people trying to scam you. So if you're thinking about a solo trip to Egypt, definitely do it. You can message me on Instagram if you have any specific questions at Explore with Laura, and I'm happy to give you any advice I can. The reality of the situation is that Egypt just does not really have the infrastructure or setup for independent travel and some of the most magical experiences I've had there that have made it one of my favorite countries in the world, like spending three days sailing down the Nile on a felucca the way Cleopatra once did, or waking up in Ras Abu Ghulam with the Milky Way fading away and the sun rising over Saudi Arabia. Those would be incredibly hard to arrange just rocking up by yourself. In fact, I've learned from working on the operator side that there's even roads that Foreign foreigners are not allowed to drive on by themselves. So while I personally have always experienced far more hospitality than harassment in Egypt, it is true that that does exist, especially at some of the big tourist sites. And being with a guide really cuts that down to a small fraction of what women traveling alone um, might experience. And I'm not saying that independent travel for women in Egypt isn't possible. I've done it, I have friends who've done it, there's so many women who have done it. Um, I'm just saying outside of some special um, circumstances, like you just wanna lay on the beach in one of the resort towns like Sharm or Hergada or Alguna. I just think it's one of those cases where uh, joining a group trip or an organized experience might actually be a little more enjoyable and more fun. I'm really proud to be heading back and um, running three group trips there this year. And we're working on many more for the future, so. Egypt has my heart and uh, I hope it will maybe capture some of yours too. So here's my advice to any woman who is considering travel to Egypt. Book the ticket. Stop hesitating, book the ticket, and then look into getting a reputable tour guide to take you out. I promise you, you will have the best time ever. As far as clothing goes, you wanna cover your knees, so either wear pants or long shorts or a long skirt. And especially in the warmer months, you might want to bring um, a light shawl just to cover your shoulders in case you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable or if you're going into a mosque 
or something like that. Remember, it's always about being smart, being respectful, and just learning about the culture before you deep dive. Enjoy! So there you go, just a few testimonials from women who have first-hand experiences in Egypt. And again, as I mentioned in part one, the, the Egypt travel guy, which if you haven't seen, make sure you go check that out. The majority of these issues that you will find, the hassling and all this stuff, will be done at the Great Pyramids and other super touristy places. Actually, 13 teenagers just got arrested at the pyramids for harassing some women. And when I say harassing, it's usually they're aggressively trying to take selfies with them and the same thing happened to us. Oh, oh crew. We got a new gang here. See you guys, see you guys. They're good. Uh, teenage boys here at the pyramids. They all want selfies. No, don't worry. <laughs> we don't, <laughs> absolute chaos. We didn't get it on camera, but there was just 20 kids just trying to get our photos and selfies and getting a, fun, but aggressive, aggressive, but fun. Yeah. <sighs> it's most definitely for more experienced, adventurous travelers who have their wits about them. But if you're not one of those people, then again, go with a guide, find some local people. That's what I recommend. And lastly, if you are a female who has traveled to Egypt or an Egyptian woman, please comment your perspective, your experiences in the comments of this video. I would love to see all of them and give other people some more information. And just like that, that is a wrap on the Egypt series. This is the final video. I have videos coming up from San Diego and then it's off to Croatia. I hope you guys like this Egypt series. Hopefully it's just the first of many. We have so much more to discover there from Alexandria to Dahab, the Red Sea, Sharm El Sheikh, and so many places in between. But if you did like the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up. It helps a ton. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Until next time, travel deeper.